In this video, we want to dive a bit deeper in how to match an Odin drawer or Odin property processor to a field property class or struct. In particular, we want to look at how to use generic arguments to match a property processor or drawer without having to create unique code for each type. This is a functionality that is not possible with Unity's built-in method for creating custom drawers. So with a bit of clever code, this means a drawer or a processor can apply to a whole category of types rather than needing to create unique classes for each type of the category. To do this, we'll be making use of C-sharp's generic constraints. These constraints will allow a drawer to focus very broadly or let a processor focus on a very particular use case. In this video, we'll look at three examples of increasing sophistication. There are several constraints that we won't make use of, and you can find more information on those constraints in the link provided in the description below. A good use of a custom drawer is to help format a given class and any classes that might inherit from it. For example, I have a base stats class that I may want to wrap in a box whenever it is drawn in the inspector. I also have a magic stats class which inherits from base stats and adds a couple of additional fields. Now it would be great if magic stats was also wrapped in a box without having to create a second drawer. On the surface, it may seem like this would happen automatically, but there are some small changes that need to be made for inheritance to work as you may expect. So let's first build the custom drawer for base stats, then make the needed changes. For simplicity, I'll be creating all the new classes in one script, but they can easily be placed in separate files. I'll also add several namespaces, some of which we need for this example, and a couple which we'll need for later examples. If this is your first custom drawer you've created with Odin, you may want to take a look at some of our earlier videos that explain more about what custom drawers do and how to make them. To create the drawer, we need to create a new class, and I'll call mine add box to stats drawer. It will inherit from Odin value drawer, which needs a generic argument of base stats, which is the target class. Then inside the class, we need to override the function draw property layout. This drawer will just add the surrounding box and then continue the drawer chain. To do this, we can use Serenix Editor GUI dot begin box. This is followed up by the function this dot call next drawer, which continues the drawing chain. That is then followed by Serenix Editor GUI dot end box to complete the wrapping of the box. We can let Unity compile. We can see that the stats field has a box around it but the magic stats field does not. This means that the drawer has targeted the base stats field, but is not targeting classes that derive from base stats. This may be a desirable result, or you may want to have a box around everything that inherits from a particular class. And to make that happen, we need to add a type parameter to the class definition using the generic name of T. We also need to change the generic argument on Odin value drawer to T as well. We then need to add the generic constraint with the keyword where, followed by a capital T, colon, and then the class base stats. This drawer will use this constraint to match up with any class of the type base stats or any class that inherits from it. If we let Unity compile, we can now see that both base stats and magic stats have a box around them as the drawer is targeting the entire category of classes. Next, we can take these ideas even further and create a drawer that targets any class that implements a particular interface. For example, we could create an interface called iResetable that has a reset function. This function could then be implemented to reset values in a particular class. Adding the interface to our base stats class, we can then create a reset function that sets both the health and gold to 100. As is, we haven't added any functionality to our inspector. And there are a couple ways to do that, but in this case, let's add an item to a context menu that would in turn call the reset function. We'll do this with an additional drawer, once again working to compose the final result in the inspector from several drawers rather than one large drawer, which in this case will allow us to add the interface to any number of classes, and the drawer will work for each and every one. This drawer needs to have a type parameter just like our previous example like so. It also needs to implement the iDefine generic menu items interface, 
This allows Odin to recognize this drawer as adding items to the context menu. We also need to add the generic constraint of where T is iResettable. As part of the interface iDefineGenericMenuItems, we need to implement the function PopulateGenericMenu. Then inside the function, we need to add an item to the generic menu, like so. We can feed in three parameters. The first is a GUI content, which serves as a label. In this case, I'll just create a new GUI content and give the string reset stats. The second parameter will add a checkbox to the item in the context menu, and in this case, we don't need that, so I'll set the value to false. The final parameter is where we add a function to be called from the context menu. This can be done using a Lambda expression, or we can use a straight method reference as it is being cast to a delegate. This reset method uses a for each loop to loop through this dot value entry dot values and call reset on each of the values. This extra step of looping through items is necessary to support multi selection. If you don't care about that, you could simply call reset on the individual value. As is, this will work, but by calling the reset function, we are bypassing the Odin property system which means we could have some strange interactions with the undo system in Unity. To get around that, we need to make sure the action is recorded. And to do that, we'll call the function this.property.recordForUndo, and then provide a brief message describing the change inside the function. As a side note, this function is available with Odin 2.1.11. If you're not running that version or a newer version, you'll need to update or use Unity's built-in system. The last step in our drawer is to override the initialize function and set this.skip when drawing equal to true. This is more performant than overriding the draw property layout function, and since this drawer isn't actually drawing anything in the inspector, we don't need to call it. Heading back over to Unity, we can see the addition of the context menu in both the base stats and the magic stats property, which shows the power and convenience of using generic matching with Odin over the built-in custom drawer functionality that comes with Unity. Now you may notice that the reset stats works for the magic stats, but it does nothing for the mana or the mana recharge properties. This is because magic stats doesn't implement a custom reset function. It's probably no surprise, but we can go even further with generic matching. We can imagine a scenario where there is a list that contains stats for all the NPCs in the scene. If you want to reset the stats of each NPC, with the current implementation, it would take a lot of clicking and a chunk of time. So let's make a new drawer that targets a list of objects that all implement the iResettable interface. This new drawer will take two type parameters. I'll call the first tList, as it will be a list, and the second I'll call tElement, as it will be an element of that list. This class needs to inherit from Odin value drawer as usual. But here, we only need one type parameter, in this case, tList, as the drawer is specifically targeting lists. Once again, we need to implement the iDefines generic menu item interface, as we'll be adding an item to the context menu. With that done, we now need two generic constraints. The first is that tList is an iList with arguments of the type tElement. We then need to constrain tElement to be of the type iResettable like so. Inside the class, we need to add the populate generic menu function, just like we did before, and we need to add an item to the context menu. In this case, we'll be calling the local function resetList, a function which we still need to create. In the case of multi-selection, the function resetList needs to loop through all the lists that have been selected, and then loop through the individual elements in each of those lists, and call reset on each of those elements. To do this, we can use nested for each loops, like so. Then like before, we'll add a line that allow us to record this action for the undo system. The last piece of the drawer is once again to override the initialize function and set this dot skip when drawing equal to true. Letting Unity compile, we can right click on the list header and we can see our new context menu item which when selected, it resets all the stats values. And again, this will work for any list of objects that implements the iResettable interface, not just a list of base stats. So the point of all this 
is that Odin, with generic matching, lets you truly and easily customize your drawers and property processors. You can focus them broadly or narrow them down to only work in specific cases. This makes them highly reusable and allows you, the developer, to be more efficient with your development time. So we hope that was interesting or better yet, useful in your project. And until next time, happy game designing.